everyone, my name is Chloe and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. So today is Tuesday. I'm starting a little late because I just finished um, my like binge of the series, The Wedding Date. Well, the first four in The Wedding Date series by Jasmine Guillory. So um, I finished that yesterday. So today, Tuesday, new vlog, new day. Let's do this thing. So um, as far as books go, I started Second Glance by Jodi Pico this morning and I'm listening to it on audio on Scribd and it's a 17 hour audiobook and on script you can only go to two times speed so it's gonna be a long one we're gonna be here for a minute but i don't know what i'm gonna do because i'm like an hour in and i'm already confused she introduced so many characters so quickly and you guys it's like a 450 500 page book and there's 12 chapters in the whole book so my plan was to go just read the first chapter physically um, so I could kind of get who's who down. But I'm in the middle of the second chapter on the audiobook and that she's still introducing people. So um, I don't know if I need to read like the first half of the book um, physically to, in order to like understand what's going on or if I just like kind of let it ride and see how the pieces fall together because uh, you get all introduced to all these people and just in typical Jodi Pico fashion, they all start coming together and by the end I'm sure it'll be very clear who's who and how they're all connected but I don't know um, right now it's really like hard to get into and so that means I'm not gonna be able to listen at all until maybe nap time or tonight when I can completely focus and so that's a little discouraging especially since it's a long one I kind of like to just like have it on while I'm cooking and that kind of stuff but sometimes I get distracted so I don't think I can do that with this one so um, that's what I'm reading as far as life goes, this morning um, we got up and um, had a pretty good morning. We did some exercise class. I have talked about it before. I do love Body Fit by Amy. She is a channel here on YouTube with like hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I don't even know. And she's got like prenatal and postnatal um, playlists. And so I did those while I was pregnant and then right after. And now I just do her regular videos and Ainsley loves to do them with me. So we do them when any naps and that was great. And now we're outside doing ice painting. And this has been like all the rage on Pinterest and, and mom groups and stuff. And so I'm, I don't know if I'm doing it right because it's just making like brown sludge and it's not quite hot enough. It's only like 75 or 80 out right now and we're sitting in the shade so the ice isn't really melting that quick. So I got some hot water um, to pour on it to help it melt a little bit quicker so she can see the colors meld, but it's really just turning into brown and black and nasty and I don't know like I don't know if I'm doing this right but whatever it's entertaining um my dad's gonna come over here in a little bit and he's gonna help me organize like our storage room my dad is the king of organization he like if you could see his closet he's like he's got perfect organizational skills and so do I um, like I really enjoy organizing that is one of my favorite things to do but with two kids you kind of need two adults um, so at least one can be being productive and the other um, can be manning the kids. So he's going to come over and help with that. And then we are going to do lunch. Um, my grandma might stop by this afternoon. I'm not really sure. Um, and then we have the chiropractor this evening, like at 430. So we'll do that. And um, that's really our day. And like days like these, I love like having back to back to back to back things because it makes the day go so quick, which I hate to say that. Like I hate to wish away time. Um, with the girls, but I like these days are kind of hard because um, if you didn't watch my last vlog, Jeremy is gone. He's in Tennessee, and so I'm here, um, single momming. Today is day six. He'll be home um, Thursday evening or something. I don't, I can't remember. Um, and so got a couple more days. We're doing great. I um, we've gotten in a routine, so it's okay. Um, it just still makes for kind of long days, especially yesterday, the girls like tag teamed me on naps and their la naps overlap for 10 minutes. And so that was a bummer. Annie is also going through like a sleep regression. Um, so we're waking up like three times a night. Um, and like the night is like six or seven hours anyway. And so then when we're wake up, waking up all the time, it makes for a tired mama, but we're getting there. We're making it through. Um, I will check in later because my dad just pulled up. Hey everyone, it's 5.45 on uh, Tuesday still, and we just left the chiropractor. And um, then we got grocery pickup, and then now we're gonna, well, we're stopped by my parents because Ainsley had to go to the bathroom, and they live really close to the grocery store, and we live like eight or 10 minutes away. So um, stopped here, she's going to the bathroom, Annie's sleeping in the back. 
Um, yeah, so we, we typically eat at like six, but uh, things are a lot more lax. Um, when daddy's gone, we just kind of wing it. So um, that's what we're doing tonight. It'll probably be more like 6.30 or so, and then it'll just be straight to bath and bed and all that. So that is that. Um, but what I really wanted to get on an update is I listened to um, A Second Glance by Jody Pico over nap, and I got over four hours into the audiobook and just didn't care. Like, there are so many characters and storylines going on. And it's all very like over the top and fantastical and it's like magical realism done wrong in my opinion. So this book is about um, this guy named Ross and let me tell you there's so many characters and they're like Ross and Rod and like can't, come on if you're going to have 12 characters and 12 point of views like differentiate enough that we can kind of keep them straight but even that like I felt like I needed a notebook and so um Anyway, it's about this guy named Ross. He comes to this, t he, he's a ghost hunter because his fiance died. And this is all like in the very beginning. So his fiance died and now he has become a ghost hunter trying to like reunite with her. And so he works for the show, but then he finds out like they're kind of sketchy. And so he quits and goes back to um, where his sister lives because they are supposedly being haunted. There's like an Indian burial ground maybe um, that is supposedly being haunted because they are building like a, a shopping mall on top of it. So he's going to hunt the ghosts. So that is what's going on. Um, there's 48,000 other characters. There's a woman who is like a, um, some sort of like fertility doctor and does like embryo stuff. And that was interesting and whatever I just ended up getting on and reading spoilers and so I know everything that happened and like so many reviews are like this is way over complicated and just unnecessary and it was not done well in my opinion and so I DNF'd it at like 25% over four hours in and for an, a 17 hour audiobook I just wasn't willing to commit so I really like Jodi Pico and I normally like her books a lot but I just couldn't do it with this one and so um I'm letting it go. That is everything, so I will check in tomorrow. It's like 1030 on, um, I don't even know, Wednesday. And we are sitting outside. We just went on a walk. Um, I took Annie in her stroller and Ainsley took Pooh Bear in his stroller. And we found a puddle that we got to play in and it was a good time. So now we're back. I don't know if I'm doing ice painting right, but it's fun. She's liking it. So we're doing it again. And she's found some sticks and stuff that she can paint with instead. So it's a new twist on an old game, I guess. And um, as far as reading goes, I started Beach Read last night. And so far, so good. I am really nervous about reading this book just because... It's so, so, so hyped. Um, I hate to be the one person that doesn't like it. And even people who don't typically like, like romance or um, women's fiction, whatever, I have been liking this. And so it's like, I really have high hopes and I'm listening to it on audio and I have it physically. So I'm kind of doing both. And so far, like I'm liking it, but I'm like, am I searching for flaws? I don't know. Hyped books are so hard. So um, yeah, that's what I'm reading. And today has just been a regular day. Um, breakfast, walk, that kind of stuff. Annie's napping, Ainsley's ice painting. We don't have any plans all day. Um, it's gonna be really hot this afternoon, so we're trying to get our outside time in now, and that's the plan, so I will check in later. You guys, I forgot to even mention that last night I read um, Dear Girl by Asia Maylock, I think is her name, let me, May Rock. Um, and she, it is just a like 100 page, um, maybe 125 or something poetry collection. And I'm not a huge fan of poetry, but, um, it was on NetGalley audio. And so I read it and loved it. Like I'm debating between a four and a half and five star. And the only thing I didn't like about it was, um, just how short it is. Like I wanted more. It was 
like a 45 uh, minute audiobook and so it was really really fast and it was just so good very feminist um, poetry and as a mom of girls it's just like teaching girls their strength and not to let anyone silence them not let anyone take advantage of them like know your worth girls because it is high you are valuable you are so much and so I just loved it it was inspiring it was wonderful so I highly recommend you check it out I think it came out um, yesterday on August 25th but I'm not positive um, if, if not it's sometime here at the end of August so dear girl by Asia Mayrock check it out so good everyone it is Thursday which means daddy's coming home today so that is exciting um, we are at grocery pickup I don't know if you can hear but um, this morning we just played outside we I made a little car wash and so Ainsley drove her cars up the ramp and washed them and then cleaned them and got them all nice and spick and span and so that was fun and then now um, we Ainsley and I are at grocery pickup and Annie was asleep, so my grandma came over to sit with her, and so we took Pooh Bear in the car seat instead of Annie. So that has been our day. Um, Jeremy's supposed to get home sometime shortly after nap, so that'll be good. Um, it means mama's gotta make dinner tonight <laughs> again, so that that's gonna happen. But anyway, as far as reading goes, last night I finished Beach Read by Emily Henry, and I'm giving it three and a half stars. I did not dislike it. Let me say I did not dislike it, but I went in expecting like a five star read or very close to a five star read and it just wasn't that for me. So um, this book, if you haven't heard, I'm sure everybody has heard, but it is about two authors who go to um, their respective like lake houses because they're both in writing slums. And so January is our main female and we get the book from her perspective. And so she normally writes romance and women's fiction with happily ever after. She's normally pretty pessim or pretty optimistic, pretty like everything ends happy and well, and she's pretty happy in general. Um, Aug or Gus is our um, ma male character, and they knew each other from college, and they were like rivals at that time, and um, now they're neighbors. And so he writes literary fiction. And he's just kind of slumpy too so they agree to switch genres and so at first their relationship is very um, bantery like they like I said were in major competition back in school and so now they're not sure like they don't really like each other still but their relationship is very very cute and it's definitely a slow burn um, so they switch genres and they start taking each other on different like outings so they can do research for the different genres and so she starts taking him on all these rom-com dates and he's taking her to like this cult and, and like shady places to do research and um, basically he doesn't believe in happily ever after or even happily for now. He says that uh, life is full of ups and downs and it ends with a down because we die. And so um, yeah, he, he doesn't believe in the sunshine and roses and he has got a reason for being so like kind of pessimistic but I thought the reason for him, like him was just kind of weak, you know, it was um, family issues and it's something that is used a lot, a lot, a lot in romance in order to make us see like, hey, this is why you should feel bad for this character. Or this is why this character is flawed or, or jaded. And it was just part of it, I think, would have benefited if we got more from his perspective. And so then we could actually like get to know him and sympathize with him. But instead, it just felt like a cheap a cheap way of making us feel like kind of sympathy, or not even sympathy for him, but kind of be endeared to him. And so without that, I just kind of was like, meh, about him. And overall, and so then um, January, our main female character, her dad dies, and she find, that's why she's at the lake house, because he died and left her this lake house. And she didn't know anything about it. She didn't know a whole lot about his life. And so she goes and the reason she's slumpy is because she thought her parents had the perfect marriage and from the outside they totally did and when he died they found she found out that they did not and so she just is not sure if she believes in love or happily ever after anymore and so she's having a hard time writing her next book so 
that is really the premise of the story. It just kind of, like I said, I would have really liked something from Gus's perspective or like some way to really um, be endeared to him a little bit more because I just didn't quite get there. And this book was a perfectly cute read. It just wasn't, it was lacking something for me. I did love everything they had to say about like writing and um, she talks about at one point like women's fiction is books and things written by women for women. Why does it have to be a narrow pigeonholed thing? That could be anything. And just the stereotypes that go with the different genres are very um, funny to see. And so it was, I really liked everything they had to say about writing. I also really liked, um, January has a girlfriend, like a, a female friend, best friend, and she is back like home, wherever home is. And they, like, you can just tell they are unconditional ride or die friends. And I love seeing good female relationships in books. And, um, it was just seemed to be really great. So I liked that. And in general, I liked the book. It just wasn't the five star that I'm hearing everybody, um, praise about, but we also know me. I like, if I go into a hyped book, my expectations almost always screw me up and I almost never like it as much as everyone else. And so, um, maybe it was just the wrong time. I'm also kind of like we're on day eight or whatever of single mom in, And so my brain is a little like fried. And so maybe I just wasn't in the right space for it. I'm starting to feel a little bit slumpy. So maybe it was that, um, I don't know. There's a million reasons and it was still a good book. I'm not saying I didn't like it. It just could have been a little better for me. Um, so now I finished that last night and normally I like read, um, a little, like I'll have an audiobook going in the morning while I'm getting ready. And today I just couldn't do it. Like I just didn't, there's nothing that I really want to pick up, especially that I have on audio. So I don't know. I started listening to, um, a podcast. It's the one with Daphne Oz. I'm, I can't think of what the name is, but I listened to an episode of that instead. And I'm kind of thinking I might just listen to that and physically read, um, but I don't know. So this afternoon, hopefully Jeremy's going to get home, um, dinner, Royals game, same old, same old. So I will get on and let you know what I pick up and when I have some thoughts on it. Hey everyone, it is Friday at like five o'clock and today has just kind of been a whirlwind day. So, um, this morning we got up, did the normal breakfast, all that kind of stuff. I got Ainsley settled out here with her. She wanted to do another little car wash station. So she did. Um, so, and I did exercise class inside where I could see her. And then we, let's see, we went outside. Jeremy took her for like an hour or so. And so I could do some editing and, um, just hanging out with Annie for a little bit. And then we did lunch, the chiropractor, and the naps, I guess. I don't know. It seems like the day has flown by, and yet we didn't really do anything. So, um, I am reading Love and Catalina Cove by Brenda Jackson, and I am loving it. I am probably, like, 90% of the way through now. And this book is basically about a woman who, um... It's from this town called Catalina Cove and she has a secret. So she has to go back to Catalina Cove because her aunt has died and left her like her bed and breakfast. And so she has to go back because she is trying to sell it and the city council is saying no because the people she's gonna sell it to are gonna make a tennis camp or something, a tennis club. And they don't want that. So they are trying to pass something to make it not go through. So she goes to fight it. And when she's there, she um, the first thing that happens is she gets pulled over by this cop. And, of course, he's ridiculously handsome, handsome and swoony. And um, the rest of the book is their relationship. But there is so much more than just that romance going on. Her secret um, is really interesting. And I kind of saw some of it coming. Like I said, I'm not completely done. So there might be more. And there is, like, a twist that just kind of happened near the end that I didn't necessarily see coming, but um, yeah, it is very interesting for sure. I am so intrigued by the series, and so I went and looked on Goodreads to see how many books is in the series, and you guys, it is not finished. It's not finished. I should have looked before, because you guys know I like to marathon series, and 
I hate it when I start a series that isn't all the way done because then I forget and whatever. And so I also looked on my library and the library has number one and three, but not two. So I might request that uh, they purchase number two, but number three is a relatively new release. And so there's a whole, like I'd have to put a hold on it. Um, so I don't know if I'll continue on right away or not. And I'll have more coherent thoughts um, when I finish it. After, like, what I like to do is finish the book, go on Goodreads, write my review, like, get all my thoughts organized, and then come on here and talk about it, because otherwise I feel like I'm kind of a jumbled mess, and so, um, I will definitely give better thoughts when I finish it. So, like I said, it's almost five o'clock. We ha were gifted Purple Carrot. Um, it's like a meal subscription service. We were gifted that for, um, like, our, the baby shower or something with Annie, and so it has been a crazy thing it has been supposedly here three times and it never like they never actually shipped it because it was a gift card um they like the amount they charged didn't cover tax and then supposedly tax went up in kansas between one week to the other so then they didn't add enough credit and it was a mess and their customer service is no good so purple carrot if you haven't tried it may you be skeptical um also it's one of those like where you just get all the ingredients and cook the thing and i have been big on like quick and simple dinners and this is not quick and simple the prep time says 45 minutes and i'm like shoot that means it's probably gonna be like an hour and a half and there's like ingredients that you have to peel and cut and like do all these things with and um so we'll see. I might, I have, I have to feed Annie here in a minute. So I might be like, hey, Jeremy, can you uh, do all the prep here? And then I'll just throw it together. Uh. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know. I'm a little nervous. I can't even remember what we got. One's a pasta thing and one's like a um, something you serve over rice, I think. So um, I'm going to go in and check that out. And then tonight is a Royals game. Um, tonight, today is like, almost 100 degrees and it's been really really hot all week but then tomorrow is Saturday and it's supposed to rain and cool down to like the mid 70s and I think it's supposed to stay like 70s and 80s now for the foreseeable future after today but I don't know the the meteorologists are only as only as accurate as they can be and in Kansas it seems like things change so quick so um that is everything I have to say for now um, oh, Ainsley, so we went to the chiropractor, and if you guys have been watching my channel for a very long time, Ainsley goes um, twice a week right now because she is very pigeon-toed, and um, basically her whole body and, like, her hips are just kind of turned in, and so um, she's been going twice a week to try to get that straightened out because, like, when she gets running, she'll trip herself because she's so pigeon-toed. And today, the uh, chiropractor was like, well, she's doing so good. Um, like, she's really straightened out. And so, she said, let's go out a month. And the chiropractor, she is just so sweet. She's around my age. She is getting married in two weeks. And she's just so sweet. Like, I really want to hang out with her as a friend. And she has a stepdaughter who is, like, four. So, I'm hoping um, maybe we'll all get together or something sometime outside of that because she has just been awesome with the girls. She's adjusted both of them and like she always reads to Ainsley before and after and like plays with her and Ainsley loves her and I just really am like kind of sad. Like I'm very glad she's doing better but I'm really sad that um, we're not going to get to see Dr. Kaylee anymore because we all love Dr. Kaylee. So that's everything. Um, you guys probably don't care. I will check in later. everyone it's Saturday at like 1 15 and I'm just upstairs trying to do some quick filming before the summer fling live show at two o'clock if you missed it it was on my channel so I will link it um somewhere up here down there maybe both I don't know um so this morning was just kind of a busy morning as usual we did breakfast actually the kids slept in until almost nine both of them so that was wonderful it's very stormy here and like right now it is 68 degrees so it's feeling like luxurious out the gloomy weather is like just making me want to nap and it's so nice but today has been pretty get and go once we got up so 
kids got up, we did breakfast, Ainsley and I went down in the basement and did exercise class, then we came back up, and um, she got ready with me, so I put on makeup and did my hair for the first time in weeks, and so that feels good, and um, she did it with me, and then she said, Mama, can we lay in your bed and read books? And so, heck yes, we can, child. So I got my Kindle, and she got her books, and we just laid there and read for like five minutes, <laughs> because she is still two so that was a fun idea and until she got like really jittery and so then we went downstairs made lunch just finished eating and now here we are so that has been the day um so as far as reading goes I came on last night and said I was almost done with Love and Catalina Cove and I finished it and I'm giving it three and a half stars and like I'm really having a hard time figuring out my rating because I really enjoyed the experience and like I kept wanting to pick it up but there were a few things that really bothered me. So the things I did not like about it is um, first of all the whole premise starts with she's going five miles over the speed limit and she gets pulled over. Five miles? Is that even like a thing? I, I think we had a friend who was a um, I think he was a highway patrol but he said, like, you can't pull anybody over for set less than seven um, just because the paperwork and stuff is not worth the time, I guess. I don't know. Um, or maybe that was just his own thing. I don't know. And so um, I just think that – and he gave her, like, a $200 plus ticket. And so I'm like, if that happened to me, there's no way that would turn into a relationship. I would be like, you are a douche. Like, that is not cool. Um, which I mean, you should follow the speed limits, et cetera, but five over like is just a little ridiculous. So, um, the whole purpose was it started because she had to go to get back to Catalina Cove from New York city, which I think Catalina Cove, I don't know if it ever says specifically where it is, but I know it's in the Southeast somewhere near new Orleans. And so she has to go back because her aunt has died and left her this inn. And the inn is really like dilapidated, run down, not, um, not successful at when it used to be. And so she goes and she really does not want to go. She has to go to take care of this stuff. And um, she gets pulled over by Sawyer. And then that starts the story. So um, there are a lot of twists and turns in the second half that were really like kept you going, um, because she has kind of a, a history that a reason she didn't want to return to the town, the people didn't treat her nice and good things did not happen to her there. So we get to learn more about those secrets and like secrets within the secret and a lot of stuff comes out. And I thought some of it was like, you really had to suspend your disbelief. But it was kept the pages turning and kept you being like, oh, 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 you know, so that was good. Um, the other part I didn't like is just neither she nor Sawyer wanted to be in a relationship. Sawyer has a 16 year old daughter, and so he really wants to protect her. And he also, um, his wife, who is the love of his life, has died. And so he's like, I don't want to, I don't want to be in a relationship, blah, 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 blah. He, she also does not want to be in a relationship because she said she's two and through. Um, her high school, like, sweetheart kind of guy, he did her dirty, and then so did her recent boyfriend. And so she said she's two and through, does not want to be in a relationship. So then, again, they create these, like, rules um, for their physical relationship. And it, I just don't like that trope. I, and I, that's me personally. I don't care for that trope just because it's always, like, this chemistry and this lust is what wins over all of that for them. And so, like, they care enough about it to make the rules and be super strict about it. But this chemistry, which is, I mean, just lust, I, I am thinking, um, over overrules all that. And I just don't like reading that storyline, probably because I just read the Wedding Date series, and the first three all have that two people that don't want to be in a relationship, but this physical relationship makes it into an actual relationship. And... So I just don't, I don't love that trope and I've kind of been saturated with it lately. So didn't love that. Um, and then just a minor complaint. There are more sexual scenes than I like, um, but they're not super overwhelming. And there's, there's, I would say probably less than five. Um, so it was pretty easy to skim through if you wanted to. And yeah, so I gave it three and a half stars. I really do want to continue with the series because the writing style I just loved and it was very, very engaging. So I really enjoyed my time reading it. I just, um, had those few complaints that like, especially as things started getting revealed, I'm like, wait, wait, what, what, 
what? So that is all my thoughts on that book. I would still recommend it, definitely. I want to continue with the series. My library has number one and number three, and so I might see if they'll get number two. Um, I'm not going to marathon it and continue on immediately, but I do like it and would like to continue on. And Brenda Jackson, I want to check out what else she has because I really like her writing style. So um, like I said, this afternoon I am just going to do the live show. And then we have another purple carrot meal tonight. And I tried to get a picture or video of making it last night. But um, I Ainsley has been very interested on in cooking and helping in the kitchen. And so it was like impossible to keep her out of the picture and yet still vlog and so I didn't um but for people who have asked like for videos and stuff of what we eat and all of that I am still I'm still trying <laughs> so they will be there eventually um people who are new to this channel we are um vegetarian with um I'm lactose intolerant and so we're, so we think so are the girls we don't know for sure um and so yeah, we eat virtually vegan, except we eat eggs. And so it's a different um, way of living, but I really like it and feel good with it. So that is what we do. So this has been a really long rambly clip. Um, oh, the thing I started on my Kindle is a NetGalley book called Calm the Heck Down by Melanie Dale. And it is about, it's a parenting nonfiction about just like calming down when you're dealing with toddlers, I think. Um, I'm like, well, five minutes into it because that's how long our reading lasted this morning. So I'm barely, barely into it. But it is a NetGalley book and the, the publication date has moved all over the place. I think right now it's either October or December. I'll put it I'll put it up somewhere. Um, and it has since been archived on NetGalley. So thankfully I downloaded it because it's still on my shelf, like counting against my unread. Um, and I've been holding off on it because I don't want to read it too soon, like b too soon before the publication date. But now that they've archived it, I'm like, well, I guess I'll just get it off my shelf. I don't know. So I'm going to read that. Um, the other thing I've been doing, like in the time that I would have to listen to audiobooks, is I've been listening to uh, podcasts. And the one I'm listening to is called Mom Jeans, and it's G E N E S. And I am a huge body science nerd. So if you didn't know that about me, I have a master's in kinesiology and health education. I just am fascinated by the way the body works. And so um, for me personally, it's not a whole lot that I haven't heard before, but it is a very, very good reminder. They are very body positive and they come um, to all these different topics, your fertility, your health, um, all these things with the lens of just trusting your body and letting your body get where it needs to be, not focusing on baby weight, not focusing on weight in general, um, all these different myths about things and like what part of our bodies can we control and what can't we and when is it like futile to try to control um, and how your body will rebel. I just think it's so cool, especially for me. Um, Annie is 11 weeks, so I am 11 weeks postpartum. My body is nowhere near what it was um, pre-baby. And this time we did um, seven months of fertility treatments. And so for us, fertility treatments means me taking a shot, um, like a, an injection, every day for seven months. And so my body was put through the ringer for seven months before I got pregnant and then nine and a half months or 10 months or however long pregnancy is. Um, so my body has just kind of been like manipulated a lot. And so now it's going to take a while, I think, for it to feel like me. And it may never now that I've had two kids and I'm 31 and I don't know. So coming to terms with all that is really hard. Body image is hard. Um, figuring out what looks good on this body is hard. Um, so it's just really, really comforting and refreshing to hear these thoughts of these women and hear the science and hear um, just a, a different voice than society's voice of saying like, get back pre-baby shape. What's that baby body like? You know, all that kind of thing. So um, I'm really, really enjoying that. And I really think I'm kind of feeling burnt out on reading and like I'm just kind of like slogging through stuff and trying to get through it as quick as I can. And so I think what I'm going to do, at least for the rest of the weekend, is just listen to mom jeans and then read the calm the heck down um, whenever I have a chance to physically read. Even though I do have it on ebook, so I could um, have Alexa read it to me or anything, I think I'm just going to physically read and focus on that podcast if I have listening time. So that's the plan. I will check in um, later.
coming back on to say one more thing because apparently I'm super chatty today. So um, I have a question because I have intentionally been uploading at different times throughout the day um, in this past week or two. And I am noticing um, different, like different amounts of views depending on what time of day I upload. So when do you guys like to watch the videos? Do you like when I post in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening? When do you watch and um, what works best for you guys? Because to me, it doesn't really matter. I try to skip schedule my posts like a or my uploads like at least a day in advance and so I can kind of pick any time the next day so let me know when you guys are watching and what works best for you because unfortunately YouTube analytics no longer lets you see that and so I don't know when it works best for you guys so I'm not going to commit to a day um, like a specific upload schedule of what days I'm going to post and what days I'm not. But I am curious what time of day um, you guys like to see videos or does it depend on the day? Um, should I just do what I've been doing and do it in the morning? Um, you guys let me know. So that is it. Hey everyone, it is Sunday at almost 9.30 and we are just getting ready to go do something outside because it is 66 degrees, you guys. I don't know when it has ever been that at the end of August. So we are going to go do something outside until church at 11. And so I just thought I'd get on really quick and let you know that I am reading still Calm the Heck Down and it is really funny. Like I am literally laughing out loud at multiple points. And the author, Melanie Dale, her and I, I think are very different. She is like a yeller and she's just very like exaggerated and extreme in a lot of her reactions to things. And surprisingly, like as a anxious of a person as I am, I'm like super chill about parenting for some reason. And like motherhood just, it kind of is natural to me or like it doesn't ruffle me very much. And I'm shocked because I, everything else I'm a spaz about, but motherhood I'm okay with. But, um, so I don't relate to it a whole lot, but it is cracking me up. It's so funny. So um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm about halfway through. Like I said, I just have really been focusing on podcasts and then physically reading that. Well, on my e-reader, but like reading with my eyes and not my ears um, on that one. So it's going a little slower, but I'm really enjoying it. And I'm hoping to get to like finish it today because um, I always have these like big dreams on weekends that like I'm going to sleep in. I'm going to get so like rejuvenated, refreshed, ready to go for the week. And then I remember like I'm sleeping with a two month old, so it doesn't really matter what day of the week it is. So last night I like stayed up late doing who knows what, um, just because I was like, okay, Jeremy's here he, tomorrow. I have nothing scheduled so I can sleep in and it won't be a big deal. And so I stayed up and then she woke up at like one thirty, and then at three and then at 5.30, like, ready to go. Like, we always get up at 5.30. So she's like, hey, mom, let's, like, let's get up. And so then at that point, I'm like, well, I'll just hopefully plan for an epic nap later. I don't even know. So um, I'm hoping nap time will go good. Like, I can feed her and get Ainsley down and then just hand her off and have a nap and finish um, reading this book. But I don't know. So I will check in later for sure um, and let you know. I don't know what we're going to go do right now. And then we'll come home, do church, do lunch, um, and then hopefully I'll be up in my room. So hopefully I will update and let you know that I have finished it because this is a NetGalley book. And I told you guys that it has been archived even though it hasn't come out yet according to NetGalley. But on Goodreads, it comes out, it came out like uh, the beginning of August. So I don't know if it's out or not. I think it is. Um... So maybe that's why it's archived. I don't know. This has happened before where like NetGalley and Goodreads don't match in the publication date. And so I'm thinking Goodreads is right. If you guys know for sure, let me know. But um, yeah, that is everything. I will check in later. Hey everyone, it's like two o'clock on Sunday and I'm just sitting here editing this vlog and I'm about to go upstairs. I'm gonna take Annie with me and feed her and then hopefully take an epic nap. And so I am going to end this vlog here because I don't think I'm gonna be um, finishing Calm the Heck Down because I am so tired, like my head hurts. And I am just hoping to zonk out. So that's the plan. And then right now the Royals are playing and losing yet again. Um, and so I don't know, I don't know if they play again tonight or if this is their only game, but um, we're going to do Sabbath snacks and that is going to be it for the night. So 
I don't think I'll do much more reading or really anything fun. So, um, this afternoon or this before lunch or whatever, after the last time I updated, we went to the park and like this sports park and Ainsley ran the bases of a baseball field and we just like goofed off and played around. There were a lot of people out since it was so nice out. And so we were going to take her to like the actual park, but there were so many people there. So we just did that and like ran around the sports complex and it was fun and it was a good way to kill an hour or two. So that is what we did. Um, if you have watched it to the very end, thank you so much. This is a longer vlog. Um, I think I just started blogging more because Jeremy came home or something. Like I finally had time and wanted to talk to somebody. I don't know. So um, if you've read any of the books I read this week, let me know your thoughts and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.